I'm the president of the Portland Trailblazers. Welcome to today's program. On behalf of the Trailblazers organization, thank you for coming. Today we come together to celebrate and remember a man who is not just a great basketball player, but a great person, Jerome Kersey. Someone who Rip City got to know while he was on the hardwood, and someone we all fell in love with with the work he did off the court. Jerome was relentless, formidable, tenacious, while also being gentle, compassionate, kind-hearted, and joyful. It's only fitting that we gather together here in the Veterans Memorial Coliseum, where Jerome was part of the core of those great Trailblazers teams that reached the NBA Finals in 1990 and 1992. To start the program off today, I would like to welcome up to the stage Al Egg, our team chaplain. Good evening. I've been asked to be brief and to the point. So if you look at your program, if you have one, it says Jerome Kersey, June 26, 1962, February 18, 2015. That first date's important because it's when he began life here on Earth. The second date's significant. It's because when he began his eternal life with God the Father. But maybe the most important thing in there is that dash. Now, some people have a very short dash. Others have a very long dash. Jerome did not have a short dash. He did not have a very long dash. You're going to hear today about the uh, many of the things that filled up his dash. But I want to tell you that the very most important day in that entire dash was the day that Jerome made the decision to begin a personal relationship with God. When he decided to pray a prayer inviting Jesus to come into his life, to be Lord of his life, and to guide and direct him. That was the day that set the stage for where he is now, and we know that he is going to spend eternity with God the Father. Inside your program, you'll see a verse from Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. It happens to be Jerome's wife Terry's favorite verse. I want you to look at that for a minute. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. This promise is spoken primarily to Israel, but it has application for us as well if we have a personal relationship with God. Terry has a very personal relationship with God, and God is upholding her and strengthening her and helping her get through this very difficult time of life. And you're going to see when she shares the strength that can only come from a relationship with God. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for Jerome. God, I love that man so much. I thank you for the time that you gave us with him. Thank you for the man you made him to be. Thank you for the impact he had on each of our lives and many, many, many others. Thank you for his love, for his wife, for his family. God, thank you for his decision to say, Jesus, I need you in my life that guarantees that he's now with you for all of eternity. Bless us today, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Yes, this afternoon there probably will be tears. That's fine. But there will be laughter and stories to be told about the man we honor today. He has made a lasting impression on all of our lives. Those of you who are here today, those who are viewing the ceremony today on television, and radio. We thank you for being a part of it. 
because Jerome Kersey was a part of your life as well. So we mourn for a while today, but then it will lighten up, and then we shall remember the good times. I would like to introduce at this time Mr. Harry Glickman, who founded this franchise back in 1970, teammates, co-workers, friends, and family, and throughout it all, I am sure that you will hear a lot of stories that might be repeated regardless of who is speaking because Jerome had passion, he had determination, kindness, and how about that smile? He had it 24 hours a day. I'll miss that, and I know you will too. So first we invite the man who was part of the management team responsible for drafting Jerome in the second round back of the 1984 draft. Would you please welcome Blazer founder and president emeritus, Mr. Harry Glickman. Thank you, Sean. I'd like to thank those in charge of the arrangements here for the privilege of saying a few words about Jerome. First, basketball. You've heard how he played a vital role, and you're going to hear more about it in our winning a couple of conference championships. When I think of Jerome, I don't think of his rebounds or his defense or his scoring. I think of the way he related to a loose ball. He's the best we ever had. <laughs> when Stu Inman and Bucky Buckwalder finally amicably settled their differences and we agreed we were going to draft Jerome Kersey, we did so and then brought him out to our rookie camp where Coach Shaq Ramsey said, he, I don't think he's quite ready for the NBA, but we sure don't want to lose his rights. He's a good player. And he suggested that we try to send him to Europe for a year and retain his rights. So we approached Jerome about that, and he said, hell no, I'm coming to your training camp, and I'm going to make your team. And he did. <laughs> it's been well documented how he played a vital role as he improved each year, finally became a starter and then played a vital role on that great collection of teams in the 90s that won a couple of conference championships. Now we're supposed to talk a little bit about non-basketball items today. And one of the things I remember about Jerome is the day he walked into my office with a snake around his neck. And I said, get the hell out of here with that thing. And he did, and I said, don't ever come back unless you come back without it. And that's the way it was. <laughs> I also remember a couple of trips we made with the ambassadors. One year we went, started in Pendleton in the morning and for some reason wound up in Boise, Idaho. The people in the office who arranged those trips didn't know a darn thing about geography in Oregon. Anyhow, one year we wound up in Bend and we met with the Blazer sponsor in the morning and then went and had uh, a meeting with a group of young boys, about 12 in number, at this facility where they were trying to get their lives back in order. And we met with them, and the kids, I remember the one I dealt with, uh, was trying to get a crime erased so he can eventually join them, uh, graduate from the school there, and then get in the military. Finally, we had lunch with these kids and had a wonderful time, and, it was time to go. We had to get to our next appointment. I said, Jerome, come on. We're going to be late. we got to get out of here. Jerome wouldn't do it. He spent a little time with every kid in that place, and they upped, and we had no idea that the media was there, but the upshot was there was a full-length picture in color of Jerome talking to one of these kids on the front page of the Men Bulletin. The Blazers couldn't, find, couldn't buy that kind of goodwill for millions. That was Jerome. Those of us who worked with him got to like him. We got to know him better and fell in love with him. I can't say it any better than this. He was a great guy and a great human being. May he rest in peace.
Thank you, Harry. As you may know, I've been around a few trailblazer teams myself over the years. And <laughs> thank you. It's Jerome that we think about today. And when Jerome came to us in 1984, as Harry explained, I had a feeling myself that that young man was going to turn in to something very special. And by golly, he did. We already talked a little bit about his tenaciousness out of the basketball floor, how relentless he was, and how he inspired his teammates night in and night out. And those great teams in the late 80s and early 90s under coach Rick Adelman, who was with us today. And it was Jerome who got that gang going many and many a day and night. He said in these words that I found, I have only slipped away into the next room. I am I and you are you. Whatever we were to each other, that we are still. Call me by that old familiar name. Speak of me in the easy way which you always used. Put no difference into your tone. Wear no forced air of solemnity or sorrow. Laugh as we've always laughed at the little jokes that we enjoyed together. Play, smile, think of me, and above all, pray for me. At this time, I'd like to introduce a gentleman that Jerome knew for a long, long time. Jerome was a man of many talents, of course, not let alone out on the basketball floor. And when he was on the court, Jerome one night, a few years ago. Trailblazers were facing the Detroit Pistons on April the 4th, 1989. I think a lot of you will remember this. As the teams lined up for the national anthem, Jerome broke away from his teammates and joined longtime friend Andy Stokes for a powerful duet that left his teammates and fans wondering if there was anything he couldn't do. Well, we must have Andy Stokes come up and sing a song for Jerome and all of us. Andy Stokes. Thank you, Bill. Y'all doing all right? We come to celebrate today. That's exactly what we're getting ready to do, okay? So, uh, Open up your hearts and your ears and enjoy one of Jerome's favorite songs. Because the song is all about him. You ready? You can clap your hands and trill it. Come on. Oh, yeah.
JK's around, yeah. JK's around, yeah. JK's around, yeah. JK's around, yeah. JK's around, yeah. JK's around, yeah. JK's around, yeah. The words, I'll be there. That was our guy, Jerome. Thank you, Andy. Anyone who watched Jerome play saw the toughness and determination that he brought to the game. He never took a play off, worked his tail off to help the team just any way that he could. We mentioned earlier about him being part of the core of those early 90s Trailblazer teams that went to the NBA Finals. And uh, to tell us more about those days, please welcome, if you will, another great favorite who has also made his home here after all these years, and a great teammate of our own Jerome Kersey. Would you please welcome Mr. Terry Porter? Charles, thank you. Andy, great job. Great job, my friend. Grandma Kersey, Mr. and Mr. Kersey, friends and family. Terry Kersey, your family. I am so sorry for your loss of a great man and a great friend. They say that a true measure of a man is in those who he has touched. And we all know Jerome touched a lot of people in his lives. One of the great things about me coming back home this year was having an opportunity to talk to Jerome, uh, reconnect with my dear friend, and we had a lot of talks. And some of the things he shared with me first how he uh, was just in a, such a great place in his life. How he loved being married to Terry. How he loved enjoying spending time with Mackenzie, Brendan, Maddie, and of course his daughter Kiara. And JK, you know, you just couldn't stop him from that huge JK smile when you talk about his little bundle of joy, and that's Harley. He, uh, Anybody ever seen a picture or seen him hold her? She was truly special to him. You know, he talked a lot about looking forward to spending a lot of time with his family, watching his family grow together. And, well, my friend, you still be watching them grow. You'll be watching them from above and they will be carrying their, your spirits with them throughout their life. 
Grandma Kersey, first of all, ma'am, know that you, uh, you should be so proud of the man you raised. Um, you did not get to experience it firsthand, but this city and this state loved your grandson. They, uh, they considered him uh, as their own son. And he will live in their minds and hearts forever. <laughs> Let's talk about drones, Blazer family, teammates. And I've said this before, as you talk as a teammate, Jerome was the best teammate you can ask for. He played with enormous energy and passion that was contagious to all of us. His peers respected how hard he played and competed. And they know when he strapped it up and stepped it in between those lines, they better be ready for 48 minutes or they were going to lose that battle that night. I want to share a story with you guys, take you back. 1990, game seven in this building against San Antonio Spurs. Down at that end of the basket, San Antonio Spurs had the ball offensively. This is a very heated game, back and forth. They made an arid pass that looked like it was going out of bounds. Jerome, with his attitude of never quitting on any play, never taking a playoff, chased this ball down, grabbed it before it went out of bounds, had the wear for all, turn around and throw it at the other end of this court, catching Clyde Drexler in full stride. Clyde then catching it and going on and finishing. We went on to win that game and went on to go to the NBA Finals. That team grew up together. That team had it. Had that special bond, that brotherhood that if you play sports, you want. You want to have that guy next to you know that he's going to go to battle with you that we all would carry with us for the rest of our lives. I want to share one more story with you guys. I was blessed to have Jerome on my coaching staff when I was in Milwaukee. And, uh, you know, Jerome would be in charge of a particular coaching drill in regards to a box out drill or, uh, and you could just see the guys just wasn't putting in the effort. They wasn't doing it the right way. JK as JK can only do it. Stopped it, jumped in there and said, look guys, this is not done the correct way. We gotta, I'm about to show you guys how to do it. And he'd go right in there with his attitude and his energy and showed them how to box out with the determination that only JK can do. And we uh, will definitely carry that with us forever. You talk about Jerome in this community his legacy in this community, and it will last forever. Just wasn't his favorite charities that he poured his heart, his heart and soul into. It was also the day-to-day -day contact he had with people. How he was so giving of himself and his time. I'll share with you guys this story. My wife was driving home, and obviously this was just after everybody had gotten the bad news. Everybody was calling in the radio station to just share their stories and how Jerome had touched their lives. This lady called in and just said, I, I just happened to meet Jerome at a random store. He didn't know me from nothing. I just walked up to him and said, Mr. Kersey? He said, yes, I am. 
He said, you are my, she said, you are my son's favorite. He said, you sure? And uh, being Jerome, the way Jerome was, he gathered that lady's information. The next day, wouldn't you know it, he went to her house with an autographed basketball, took photos of the young man, and just shared a time with a young man who just honored him and respected Jerome for what he brought every day. And that's, that's Jerome in our community. That, that's how much and many people he touched. I was so grateful God gave me last Tuesday morning with him. Two old warriors talking about our broken down bodies. <laughs> uh, representing a team and a town we loved. Talking to kids about a brighter future. About appreciating those who blazed the trail before them. It's a moment I will treasure forever. Well, my friend, the good Lord had called you, but you don't have to worry about being a second round pick in his draft. You are a guaranteed lottery pick. Love you, bro. Rest in peace, JK25. Very nicely done, Terry. While it was Jerome's play on the court that made the Trailblazer fans cheer, of course, it was the impact and work in the community that won their hearts forever. He went from just being a member of the roster to being a member of the community, not only here locally, but all over this great state, and continue that way, even after his playing days were over. At the time of Jerome's death, he was the Trailblazers Director of Alumni Relations, and before that served as a Trailblazers Ambassador, where he continued to serve the Portland community on behalf of the organization since 2007. School assemblies, basketball clinics, hospital visits, you name it. Jerome was there, he did it all, did it with joy, eagerness, and always that well-known smile on his face. I would like now to bring up the woman who had the pleasure to work side by side with Jerome for so many years former Trailblazers Vice President of Community Relations, and now with the Boys and Girls Club of Portland Metro. She spent some 22 years with us, did a great job. Mrs. Tracy Rose. Tracy? Good afternoon. My name is Tracy Rose, and I had the tremendous honor of calling Jerome Kersey my friend for the better part of 30 years. When I first started at the Trailblazers, Clyde, Terry, and Jerome were already there. Right after I started, Kevin Duckworth joined us, and shortly after that, Buck Williams came along. To remember that time, that very special time in Trailblazers history, all you have to do is mention those five names, Clyde, Terry, Buck Duck, and Jerome. You say those names and any Blazer fan immediately remembers exactly how exciting that time was and how awesome the basketball was in this building. At that time, I had the great fortune to watch Jerome Kersey be a hero on the court, but I had also the great privilege of watching him be a hero in the community. He was one of those special athletes that never forgot where he came from. He lived and modeled the very values that was instilled in him by his precious Grandma Kersey. And he made us proud every day. 
And from the moment he signed that very first contract and throughout the rest of his life, he made giving back a priority. I've dug deep over the past 12 days to remember, to try and remember every special moment I shared with Jerome. And there are many, a lot of them were on the court, but most of them that I remember that stand out the most are the ones of him doing his magic in the community. And as you've heard, it wasn't just the community work, but it was with the people, whether it was his family or his teammates or the people that he worked with or complete strangers. His work will go on and on. I don't have enough time, obviously, and I think Todd would be a whole lot happy if I didn't tell all the stories. But there are two in particular that I would like to, to touch on today. This man, his, his appearances that he would do for the team were just the beginning of what he gave back. His giving ranged forever. He would do the school visits, like Sean's mentioned, and the basketball clinics. But he also worked on political campaigns. He would support the arts. He supported youth sports in general. He supported the Humane Society. He took on, very personally, the battles to fight cancer, heart disease, diabetes, and MS, because those were things that he felt very, very attached to. So as you can see, if you didn't know it before today, he was as much of the warrior in the community as he was on the court. The two stories that I want to share with you today are two that will really give you, from my point of view, what I think really defines Jerome Kersey. The first one um, is my favorite story, and I've told it a few times, but it was back in 1992. Take yourself to June 1992. We were on our way to play the Chicago Bulls, the second time we were in the NBA Finals in three years. This team, these guys, were like rock stars in this community. I often said I didn't think that the Beatles would get any more of a response than these players. People would come running after them in the community. And, and they were so under demand. Um, and uh, we were on our way to the finals, so it was hands off. Nobody asked these players to do anything. They were all focused on basketball. I was sitting at my desk. And Jerome called me and he said, hey, I'm, I'm in the parking lot. I need you to bring me down an autograph basketball, get a shirt, a cap, anything else you might have. Um, bring them down to me. So I put a package together and I went downstairs. And when I walked out into the parking lot, it was Jerome, but not just Jerome. It was Terry, it was Clyde, and it was Buck, and it was Duck. Jerome had met a woman in the store. And she had told him a story about a child who was a huge Blazer fan, and he was in the hospital. So Jerome immediately called his brothers. He gathered them together and met at the office. I gave them their package, and they went on up to the hospital and spent the afternoon with this child. That was Jerome doing what Jerome does. My earliest memory of working with Jerome in the community was at the Columbia Boys and Girls Club in North Portland. I had the privilege of going to the club with Jerome and Terry. And when these guys showed up, they were like the Pied Piper. The kids would come running from everywhere. When I thought about what Jerome does and means for this community, it automatically reminded me of these times because Terry grew up in the clubs back in Wisconsin, and the clubs are very near and dear to him. Jerome didn't have a boys and girls club in his hometown, but there was something about the clubs that made him feel at home, and there was a, something about these kids that made him see himself in them, and he knew that he could have this influence on them to show them that anything is possible, because that's what happened with him. When we Thanks to Terry and Jerome and their work with the Boys and Girls Clubs, they inspired the Trailblazers to contribute to the building of the Blazers Boys and Girls Club on Northeast Martin Luther King Boulevard. And I'd like to make sure that the Kersey family knows that that building today stands in part because of the work that Jerome did. That is his legacy that stands there today.
as I think back on the times that Jerome was most happy and proud, and three of them are uncontested. The first one was any of us that were around him at the time when he found out that he was going to be a father. He was born to be a dad. Jerome Kersey could not be in a room with a baby without holding that child. So when he found out that Kiar Kersey was coming into his life, that's the moment the moon and the stars got hung for Jerome Kersey. I don't have to tell you, Kiara, but he loved you more than life. The other thing he wanted more than anything, always, was to be a husband and have a family. And although he took his time, <laughs> it was time well spent because Terry Kersey, you took him out at the knees. He loved you with all his heart and you gave him his family. And just when you thought it couldn't get better for Jerome, Kersey along came baby Harley. And that's when we all saw Jerome experience pure joy. He was so happy being a grandfather. His life was perfect and his life was complete. In honor of JK25 today, I'm going to close and just ask all of you, let's never ever forget where you came from and always remember to be kind. I had the privilege of accompanying Jerome on many of those community events, and he truly enjoyed representing our organization, the Portland Trailblazers. And one of the questions I got asked all the time, and Jerome would say, you're going to get that question asked, you know that. And he said, what's that? Mercy, mercy, Jerome Kersey. Well, I did, and continue to do it. Very quickly, I'll tell you that story because that phrase stuck. It was probably in Jerome's second year, about halfway through the season, and the team was doing its number, playing as hard as they always did in those days. And Jerome, on this one particular day, running all over the place, you know, he liked to dunk the ball, he liked to do everything, swat the ball away from the opponent, whatever it might be, to to get more points for himself and his guys and his team. And all of a sudden, I believe it was Terry, because Terry and I were talking about this the other day. Jerome took off after play at one end, going back towards the blazer basket. Terry saw him. He threw the ball practically the length of the floor. Jerome caught it, took one dribble, took off, a two-handed slam. Now, I was on the radio at the time, brought him out, all that play, and when it came down, this building here erupted like nobody's business, and for whatever reason, I said, mercy, mercy, Jerome Kersey, and it stuck. Right now, we'd like to show a video on some of the highlights of JK25. Watch the screen.
I'd like the memory of me to be a happy one. I'd like to leave an afterglow of smiles when life is done. I'd like to leave an echo whispering softly down the ways of happy times and laughing times and bright and sunny days. I'd like the tears of those who grieve to dry before the sun of happy memories that I leave now that my life is done. We've heard a lot about Jerome, a little more to come in his association with the Blazers and for as much as he was always there ready to represent the organization, he was even more invested in the lives of his friends and completely devoted to his family. Would you please welcome to the stage at this time one of Jerome's very best friends. They've known one another for 30 years. He was his best man, Mr. Ron Sloy. Ron? Grandma, Mom Kersey, John, father's, Jerome's father, Terry, Kiara, I'm so sorry. They say a true character of a man is judged by how he treats others that can do nothing for him. That was Jerome. Jerome never looked down on anybody. He was a big man, but he loved everybody. Sean's, I, I saw where a week or so ago when Jerome passed, you said you've lost a son, and I think a lot of us feel that way. I find it so interesting that the synonym for mercy is kindness. And I must tell you, Jerome is the kindest man I've ever met. I want to tell you one brief story that Terry shared with me about a week ago. After every home game this year, Jerome would go up into the suites and collect some of the food that hadn't been opened, load it up in his back seat and his trunk and drive down to Old Town and pass it out to the homeless. He'd tap him on the shoulder and say, you have a good evening. This is from the Portland Trailblazers. Jerome told me a long time ago that the number one thing that you can give 
a person is your time. I want to read you a brief email that I received earlier this week. I've received thousands of emails about Jerome all over the world, and of course, hundreds and hundreds of text messages, but there was one that really struck me that is a testament to who, who Jerome Kersey is. He's a friend of mine. Ron, I want to share with you a short note that I received from Grant's teacher. Grant is eight years old and in the second grade. It's been a tough week for him and our whole family for that matter, with the passing of Jerome and tragically, my father passed last Monday. I think it's wonderful that Grant considered Jerome his friend. Jerome was always extra sweet to my kids when I saw him, when he saw him out at Columbia Edgewater and everywhere else in town. I recently took Grant to a Blazer game where we ran into Jerome. After lifting Grant higher than he's ever been lifted by any human, he asked Grant how things were going. Grant told him he was playing second grade basketball. He then asked Jerome, when he played in the NBA, how many times he had to pass the ball before he could, he could shoot? Because he explained his team had to pass the ball twice before they could shoot. <laughs> Jerome replied, I took it straight to the hoop, my man. <laughs> and he said, Jerome was a gem. This is what Grant's teacher had to say. So yesterday morning, I checked in with Grant to see how he was doing and let him know how sorry I was to hear that his grandfather had passed. He got a bit, bit teary-eyed and said that everybody he knew was dying. When I asked him who else died, he said, my best friend. And I expressed some surprise and asked, who was his best friend? And Grant said, Jerome Kersey. He told me that he and his dad, Rob, had dinner with Jerome once, and he was the nicest man he'd ever met. I talked to Jerome about two hours before he passed. And so the following morning, this is what I wrote him. Jay, I'm so glad we had a chance to talk on the phone yesterday. The best part is how we'd say goodbye as we've done for almost 30 years. I'd say I love you and, and he'd say I love you too, pal. I had no idea it'd be the last time I'd talk to you. Thank you for your guidance and for your friendship. You're the finest man I've ever met. A true gentleman, caring, humble, generous, and selfless. It looks like we'll have to take a rain check on our dinner that we had scheduled for next week. I'll get up your way when it's my time. Give Duck and Luke a hug for all of us and can continue to watch over us and take care of us as you've always done. It's been a true honor to be your best friend. I'm so tremendously, tremendously sad and, and heartbroken. I will. I am and will continue to be so very proud to call Jerome Kersey my best friend. God bless you, my dear Jerome. The next time I make a birdie on the golf course, it'll be in your honor. Rest in peace. Love, your funny boy. If love could have saved Jerome, he would have lived forever. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Ron, very much. But I'd like to welcome up to the stage someone that Jerome was very, very proud of. He talked about her all the time. From a little girl, she grew up, became a mother, 
And then Jerome was the grandfather, and she has some words to speak about her dad, Kiara. Kara? Kara. There we go. Up. First, I'd like to introduce you all to my daughter and Jerome's granddaughter. This is Harley Ray Kersey. So <laughs> um, first off, I just want to thank everybody for being here, taking time out of your day. It means a lot. And um, I'd like to personally thank Steve Blake for honoring my father by giving up his jersey. Thank you to the Portland Trailblazers organization, specifically Paul Allen, who graciously took care of all the travel arrangements for my father's family and friends from back east. Thank you. I could not imagine going through this without you. And to all of you here today who have come to honor my father, I'm so thankful and greatly humbled by the outpouring of your support. My dad absolutely loved the fans and the city of Portland, and there aren't enough words to describe the depth of gratitude and love that I have for all of those who have supported us and the many ways that the greater Portland community has honored my dad. This is not only a tribute to the amazing man that he was, but has also helped us start the grieving process and the healing process. Every time I read a story on social media, every time I read an article or see an interview on the news, or when someone shares th these simple stories of how my dad impacted their lives, it turn my, turns my sadness into pride. I'm confident his family, friends, and this community will never let his legacy die. What is my dad's legacy? The great Jerome Kersey, mercy, mercy, Jeromeo to the ladies. <laughs> JK, daddy, Portland son, husband, g -paw. You know, growing up, I don't think I ever really understood how famous my dad was. When people asked to take pictures with him, I assumed it was because of his devastatingly good looks. And they apparently run in the family. I'm talking about his granddaughter, of course. <laughs> and any of you who knew my dad knew that he liked to look good. The man had plenty of clothes and shoes to make sure he was always prepared for every occasion. Putting on his game shoes, my dad made quite the impression. Most of you here know about his stats and career in basketball but I think one of his greatest marks in the NBA and within the Trailblazers organization was his hustle. He appreciated and worked hard for every moment of his career, starting in his college days at Longwood. Some people would say he got lucky. However, luck is where preparedness meets opportunity. You know my dad was always prepared. Growing up, I got to see a more casual side of my dad. In my younger years, my dad spent a lot of time with my family and I in Gresham. His notoriety in the community always brought people in droves, asking for autographs, favors, photo ops, asking him for charity events. Even when we were at church, they couldn't help but wanting part of his energy. It was very rare for me to see my dad turn people down if he was available. It was during this time that my grandma even convinced him to perform in her charity dinner theaters. This may be hard for you all to picture, so bear with me. But my dad has been a bouncer to the president, a soggy bottom boy in overalls, fake teeth, and a beard. 
And he even sang George Strait's You Look So Good in Love, and it drove the woman crazy. <laughs> Bet you never knew my dad was a closet country fan. One of my fondest memories was when I was 17, and my dad and I drove to Seattle and stayed downtown for four days. We walked down to Pike's Place and the waterfront. We went to the Science Museum and the Experience Music Project and just spent a lot of time together. I remember we mostly talked about school, cars, and sport, sports. We tried to stay away from the boys' subject. And that was just fine by me. It was special because, for the most part, it was uninterrupted. At one point, we were shopping, and he looked over, and he saw Anderson Silva, the UFC fighter. You should have seen my dad's face. <laughs> he was completely starstruck, which was very rare for him. The spider was his favorite fighter at the time, and I know my dad wanted a picture with him, but he would never admit to that, so he told me, me to get up there and take a picture. <laughs> Aside from being the NBA player and the community servant extraordinaire, he was just a normal guy. When it all boils down, the trip was not extravagant or groundbreaking, just spending time together. That was the best thing I could have ever asked for. In these precious moments, I saw him change from dad, later to husband, and eventually to grandpa. People handle change in different ways, and I wasn't sure how my dad would do in these new roles, but in God's hand, I knew everything, even though he was hard-headed, stubborn, and determined. I'm pretty sure he thought the same thing about me too, but I knew he, was, he would always come through. Terry can attest to that. She's been an amazing strength during their relationship. She knew how to love him strong and put him in his place when he needed a swift kick in the butt. That's what a good woman does for her man. And together they have made a lasting impact in the community for Harley and I. I know I'll never forget my dad's face when he discovered for the first time he was going to be a grandpa. The shock and awe on his face was absolutely priceless. I've never seen his mouth open so wide or smile so big. At first, I wondered how things would go, how he would feel about me having a baby, him being a grandpa, having this new little life joining our team. Well, Dad took to being a grandpa just like he took to everything else. He formulated a game plan and exhibited hustle during a high-pressure moment. What was his play? Within 48 hours, he had already shopped at all the local stores, buying a whole baby setup for his home. You could say Harley had him wrapped around his finger from day one. Of course, it didn't stop there. Dad couldn't walk into any baby store and without buying something for Harley. There was this one moment when my dad fully took on the grandpa role. It was when I was passing by the door of the nursery and I caught him as he was changing Harley's diaper. I watched briefly and peeked around the corner while he was making all these baby sounds and being so delicate with this teeny tiny thing. There's something pretty hilarious about seeing a six, seven man coo at a baby and say, who's gonna change your diapy wipey? <laughs> and there was more than a diaper that had been changed. A great dad had changed into an even greater grandpa. Dad, I'm so glad God gave me to you and mom, and it would be really easy for me to be angry right now for so many reasons. Harley's first birthday is right around the corner and we are in the middle of planning the whole thing. What about Harley's first day of school? Or what about giving me away at my wedding someday? I don't understand God's timing, but ultimately, Dad, I know you would want me to appreciate the time we had together and not dwell in this moment. So I choose to imagine there's only one of two things happening to you right now. You're either dunking on Jesus or riding a Harley Davidson while singing with my grandpa in heaven. Dad, I'm devastated and I'm grieving as we all are. However, I'm so overwhelmingly grateful and celebrating the 21 years I've had to see the many different dimensions of your character. I know you would challenge me to give just the smallest effort in some way to fill the shoes you wore for your multiple walks in life. I'm going to give my all 
to continue to fulfill the Kersey legacy you started by staying connected and honoring the four families we have gathered here today. The Blazers organization and fans, our Kersey family and closest friends, my bonus mother slash grandma, <laughs> Terry, and the whole Folsom family. And finally, my mom, Angela, and my bonus dad, Corey, and the whole Stilato friends and family. We've made it this far, Portland. Let's not stop now. I love you, Dad. I think Harley needs a, a little attention, too. She had a problem up here. That's OK, Harley. Ladies and gentlemen, our final speaker, taking a lot of intestinal fortitude to do this. Jerome Kersey's wife, Terry, please welcome her. This is incredible. Um, you know, I've sat right in this area with Jerome. Um, let's see, when for Kevin Duckworth, for Maurice, for Dale, uh, for their services. I mean, held his hand. And I every time looked at him and said, don't ever do that to me. It's amazing to think I'm standing here. Um, so first, I just wanted to thank you all so much for the outpouring of love and support for my family. Um, Thank you to the Trailblazer organization for everything that you've done for me and the continued support and encouragement. Um, Jerome loved the Trailblazer so much. Um, he was so proud to be part of this organization. You know, people um, often would ask me if I would get bothered by getting interrupted, stopped, or handed the camera to be the picture man. Uh, my answer was always no. Um, it didn't bother me because I knew how much Jerome loved the fans. Uh, he truly did. He once told me the reason why he would stop to sign an autograph or take a picture was because he was grateful that people still remembered him. Clearly, he's remembered. So um, I never really watched Jerome play basketball, um, other than what I like to call the Icy Hot League, um, kind of when like the old guys get together on like a Saturday morning, you walk in the gym, it kind of burns your eyes a little bit from all that stuff they rub on. Yeah. Um, I never told him that's what I called it. Um, actually. Uh, Terry Porter was my favorite player. Well, that's what I told him. Um, he would always get mad at me. How could Terry be your favorite player? Who do you think was getting in the ball? <laughs> well, I never really saw Terry play either. Um, <laughs> but it was just how I kind of poked fun at him. Um, so my story about Jerome really doesn't have anything to do with basketball. My story with Jerome was 
it was a complete love story. Um, the man that I know was loving, caring, thoughtful, kind-hearted husband, father, grandpa. Jerome and I, along with our four children, Kiara, Mackenzie, Maddie, Brendan, and granddaughter Harley, led a very simple life. Um, if we, he didn't have an event to attend or a blazer game, most nights we spent at home. He was very much a family man and enjoyed dinner with our kids where we sat at the table every night together. He made sure we prayed at every meal, whether at home or at a restaurant. I love that about him. Jerome took care of his family. It was very important to him that we were always okay. When I first met him, I had just been diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. There had been many times in our relationship where he would have to carry me, and he did. He would wrap his, ar his big arms around me. I knew I was safe. He never complained or made me feel like a burden. He just did. It was just Jerome being Jerome. He was a caregiver with a huge heart. He loved to fuss over me. It drove me crazy. Uh, he always making sure I was warm enough. Made sure I was eating, taking my medication. He would often bring me flowers, cards, can of spam. I only ate spam on special occasions, so it was kind of a treat. Um, he didn't like anyone to fuss over him. I don't think that he liked the attention, um, but he always did a great job taking care of those he loved. Jerome loved to laugh at all the klutzy, kind of quirky things that I do. I know I look put together, it's a facade, it's not real. Um, I would enter a room, trip, fall, things come crashing down. He loves, ah, oh, Terry's here. Um, so we, we just clowned around a lot. Um, when he'd just be chilling out, I'd love to poke at him, see how quickly I could annoy him. Um, then I, I would just laugh at him, and he always told me that I was his most difficult child. I teased him often about how um, we'd grow old together. Well, I would grow old and because he was already there. Um, so if you knew Jerome, you, all, you knew he was a bit of a procrastinator. I mean, he, if he said he was going to do something, he would do it, but kind of did it on his own time. It took him nearly nine years to marry me. During that time, I would always remind myself that God's timing is perfect. When we got married, it was all that. A perfect day, so beautiful. It was the happiest day of my life. I will never forget the look on his face when he first saw me walk down the aisle. He had tears in his eyes. I had finally become one with my best friend, my soulmate. As I stand here right now, this very moment, I no longer feel like God's timing is perfect. This doesn't feel perfect at all. What I do know is God's timing is God's timing. It just is. Not once have I questioned why. I may never understand. I just pray that God gives me peace. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and so did Jerome. I trust that he has everything under control. My hope is in heaven. 
Although my plan was to spend the rest of my life with Jerome, I am so thankful and so blessed that he loved me enough and chose to spend the rest of his life with me. His very last words to me were, baby, I love you. He was my dream come true. Thank you. As we draw our celebration, Jerome Kersey, to a close, we knew that there are so many of you that have your own Jerome story, and if you would like to share that story or make a note to the family, please send them to the Trailblazers office at the address that's listed in the program. I'd like to take just a moment on the back of your program is this poem. You can find it there. It exemplified how Jerome lived his life, and it says, I've seen better days, but I've also seen worse. I don't have everything I want, but I do have all I need. I woke up with some aches and pains, but I woke up. My life may not be perfect, but I am blessed. Very nice. For all of those who were lucky enough to meet Jerome and spend a lot of time with him, we can honestly say that we, we are the ones that have been blessed. Agree? We thank you for coming out today and being at this service to commemorate his life. And just before we go, I'm when I finish here, it's going to be a video on the screen. We want you to watch that. Jerome liked this. Listen to the words. Should you go first, and I remain to walk the road alone, I'll live in memory's garden with happy days that we've known. In spring, I'll wait for roses red when fades the lilac blue. In early fall, when brown leaves fall, I'm going to catch a glimpse of you. Should you go first, and I remain, for the battles to be fought, each thing you've touched along the way will be a hallowed spot. I'll hear your voice, and I'll see you smile, though blindly I may grope the memory of your helping hand will buoy me on with hope. Should you go first, and I remain, to finish with that scroll, no lengthening shadows shall creep in to make this life seem droll. We've known so much of happiness, we've had our cup of joy, and memory is one gift of God that death cannot destroy. Should you go first and I remain, one thing I'll have you do. I want you to walk slowly down that long, long path because soon I'm going to follow you. I want to know each step you take, that I may walk the same, for someday down that lonely road, you'll hear me call your name. And now I want each and every one of you, as we go into the video, as loud as you can and as make it so that he can hear us on the count of three. I want you to do that phrase. You know what I'm talking about? One more time. It's for our guy. 
Let him hear it. One, two, three. Mercy, mercy, Jerome Kersey. Amen. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Just this picture, bump on your head. Bust a bucket, do the doctor, buzz a duty, super sucker, slap it, music, kill it, 